So, you want to make a cool transition in Blender? Well, go ahead and book a ticket on a train, go ahead and sit down, and meet your best friend John. Train. Sit. John. Transition. Tran transition. Transition. Okay. Hey guys, welcome back to Spy Kai. I'm Kai, and today we are back once again. Wow. That, yep. Yeah, I already know you guys are gonna like that one. <laughs> We're back with another video today. I don't even know where to go from that, guys. This tutorial's over. I've ruined it. It's done. That's all. That's that's it. That was just too good. I can't even do the tutorial after that. It's, you can't top that. Anyway, we're going to start it today. We're making this uh, cool transition kind of motion graphic thing. Um, and I thought it was really cool looking. Decided to share it with you guys. Let's get started. We got some stuff to do. Nothing too crazy. Um, but we're going to hit Shift A and add in a... Uh, Oh, a, a circle. <laughs> We're going to add in a circle and hit uh, tab to go into edit mode and hit E and Z to, to extrude on the Z axis. E and then Z. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just pull that up right there and then just left click to confirm that. With the, the loop cut tool over here on the side, I'm going to click that and then up here at the top, I'm going to change the number of cuts to 10. Hit enter, and then just hover your cursor until the the yellow line is like a circle, and then just click once. Boom, we got 10 cuts in there, which is nice, which means we have 12 overall from these two up here, one and two. Um, we'll go back to the select tool up here at the top, and we will grab, uh, well, actually, we'll hit one on my numpad, one, right there. Um, and now we can grab the, uh, the top the top loop here by holding down shift and alt and then just clicking that loop so then it'll select every single vertice on the top there which is pretty cool um then we can go ahead hit o on our keyboard o on our keyboard to turn on proportional editing mode then we can hit g and then uh sorry not g r and then z to rotate on the z axis now you can see we're only getting a little tiny bit of the um the cylinder here so i'm gonna scroll my mouse wheel up until we have all of it and then you can see I'm just going to move my cursor around and, and get some nice little squiggles. Now, you can you can literally curve this as much as you want to. You cannot curve it at all. You can leave it a square. And I'll show you why this is really cool later on. But we're just going to do it like this. But I'm going to do it in an increment that makes sense. I'm not just going to do it to a random value. Just like, oh, hey, look, that looks good. Um, I'm going to hit RZ. And then I'm going to hit uh, maybe 45. We'll, we'll do 45, um, which looks pretty good to me. Then hit enter. So now it's an even value. So if we were to go ahead and hit one on my numpad, you can see we have a. Uh, actually, let's do this. Let's do let's do this from. Da, 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 da. Let's do it from 90. Let's do 90. So R Y, and then. Da, 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 da. I want to get all of them except for there we go. So you see down at the bottom. See down at the bottom. I don't want these bottom vertices to swivel. I only, I want them to stay right exactly where they are. So if they're moving, you don't want that. Like you don't want the the your scroll wheel to be so far out that the bottom values are moving. You don't want that. So I'm gonna scroll my mouse wheel in until it gets to about right there because the bottom vertices don't seem to be moving, which is what I want. So right there, you can see none of the bottom vertices are swiveling. That's what I want. Then we're gonna hit 45 on our numpad. Then hit enter. Now you can see we have a vertice down here at the bottom and up at the top, which is what it was exactly what we need. So we have all that set now. We have a completely swiveled little circle thing. Um, now the cool part comes in with this next part. So I'm gonna go and go to the modifiers tab and add a modifier of uh, am I blind? No, it's right there. Uh, wireframe. There we go. I'm not blind. I can see. Um, wireframe. Now the wireframe is as you see is gonna take all of the vertices and all of the edges rather. And uh, kind of link them together, which is really cool. And now we have this kind of like wireframe mesh looking thing, which just looks really awesome. Um, really cool stuff. Now, um, we're going to do some more stuff with this in, in a second. But I want to add another modifier. We're going to add an array modifier. Um, and now we're going to change these values. So I'm going to turn this from 1 to 0. And then I'm going to go down here to the third one and change this to 1. So there we go. Now it stands on top of each other, which is what I need. Um, but first, I'm going to hit R, X, and then 90 on our numpad, left click to confirm that, then hit 1 on our numpad, grab our camera, select that, hit Alt G and Alt R to clear the rotation and location of the camera, hit R, X, 90 on your numpad, and hit enter, boom, now the camera's rotated, we can hit G, Y to move the camera back here, which is what I need, so, 
zero to go into the camera's view. Now, uh, we can bump these values up a little bit more to bump the count up because I don't want to see this extra space. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit, uh, I'm going to bump that up by one to make that three and that should be good. Um, you don't really need anything else. I mean, you could go back further, but you don't really need it to like go way back there and then just go, Hey, bump up. See now all of the, um, spaces are much smaller. So I don't, you don't really need it to, to be all like that. You can just, you can scale it up if you want. Really, you don't even need three, which I might just do. So I'm going to scale that up and then get rid of the third one. Cause I don't really need that. Yeah, let's do that. All right, cool. So now our little, our little slots are kind of bigger, just a little bit. Um, we can make them even bigger by turning the thickness up, but we'll do that in a second. So we don't need to mess with that right now. The next thing we gotta do, and one of the final things, is we're gonna add the material first of all. So let's go to the material tab, hit this little button right here, and add this material. Change this from principal BSDF to emission, and then we're gonna change the color to something that I want, which uh, for this specific thing, I'm gonna do like this reddish pink, uh, which is a color that I use quite frequently for my gaming channel. There we go. All right, cool. So we have this nice color, which the hex is somewhere around there, FF2343, which is a pretty cool number. Um, now, if we go to render viewport shading, you can see we have that nice reddish pink color, which is awesome. I'm going to change the background. I'm going to go to the world tab here and change this color to solid black. And turn my overlays off for a second. Hit this little button up here. Now, this is a little too pink, actually. Let's make this more red with that emission. Oh, well, you know what? No. To go to color management and turn filmic to standard. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. All right, cool. That, that's much better. All right, so um, yes, we need to also go to film and check transparent right there. So that's the big thing. Um, awesome. Next things next, we got to do some good stuff. So I'm going to grab uh, the timeline down here and just scroll it up a little bit, make it a little bit bigger so you can see it. I'm going to change my start frame to zero because, you know, go to, the, go to the zero frame and then I'm going to go ahead and grab... Um, and grab our, our big little tunnel looking thing, I guess you want to call it, and then hit I rotation on my keyboard. Then we're going to go to the last frame, which I want to be frame 100 and then go to that frame hundred. And then with our cursor on our timeline, cursor on our viewport, sorry, we're going to hit R Y and then 45 on our numpad left click to confirm that. And then we're going to go ahead and before we do anything else, hit I rotation now when we play this you can see that our tunnel does rotate but the problem is it slows down and speeds up when it gets to the first and last frame and it has a more steady value in the middle around frame 50 so we're going to fix that by going ahead and dragging our uh, mouse up when you get this little plus in the bottom left hand corner you can also do it from the bottom right or the top right or the top left, it doesn't really matter. As long as you get that little plus icon, just drag up from there. Um, and then we can change this window with this little button right here to the graph editor. That's right, you guessed it, you know what we're doing. I'm gonna scroll my mouse wheel out here and then just double tap A to make sure everything is selected. Everything's already selected, so we're good to go. I'm gonna change, uh, I'm gonna go to the key, sorry, and then go down to interpolation mode and change this from linear, change this to linear, sorry, from, um, what was it, wait, Wait a minute, I just said something wrong. Yeah, change it to linear from Bezier. Awesome, cool. Um, now, if we play this now, you can see that we have a steady value all the way across. It doesn't slow down, doesn't speed up anymore. And now you can see that the, um, the, the, the circle rotates evenly. And now it looks like it's infinitely going without us having to do anything, which is awesome. So, looking good. Now, next thing we got to do is animate some other values here. So, I want to go to the zero frame. And we're going to change, we can, we can downsize the array because we don't need that anymore. Um, we can go to thickness, and now you can see we can play around with this thickness, and this is what's going to help us out real quick. So that's the effect right there. That's what I'm going for. And uh, we got to get some pretty good uh, animation going for this. So I'm going to change the thickness to zero on the first frame, so there's nothing there. I'm going to hover my cursor over top of that thickness value and hit I on my keyboard. Make sure it's yellow. Then I'm going to go to like frame maybe 20 and hit uh, maybe a thickness of point. Eh, that's way too thick. Uh, point. Let's do point zero five. 